<laughs> we were live because it automatically turned it on uh, for the seven o'clock. Huh? Yeah, it turned it on. How's that even possible? Got if me. we didn't, if we didn't go live, it then how is it? I don't know. It turned it on. Oh. Just on that, that channel. That's weird. Just on YouTube. Nothing scheduled to yeah. go live. I don't know. That is weird. <laughs> I wonder if we've been live the whole time. We haven't. No. Okay. I checked. I mean, because like, I've had this, I've had this like, up for a while, and like, you know. Fixing dinner yeah. and yelling I was, at the I was kids. I worried about and... the, the naked walking around thing. I, <laughs> I know, going, right? <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants to see uh, that. Uh, oh. hmm. uh, what is up, folks? It's Sunday night. It's 7 o'clock. Welcome back. We're along the panhandle. We're back. Uh, you can know what? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's going to get back into our groove. Where's my coaster? There we go. <coughs> All right. Uh, so, it's 7 o'clock. It's time for the Panhandle Fishing Report. I'm your host, Smitty, with Smitty Surf Fishing, and with me always is my co-host. What is up, everybody? It is Demo from Finding Demo Surf Fishing Podcast. Welcome to the end of the weekend. It's been a month. We've missed you guys, and it has been a ridiculously busy month that we have been <laughs> off. I cannot count the amount of things that we've had going on properly to, to even say it right. So, it's nice to be back. So many things. Like I don't like when I was typing up the notes, I was like, okay, we haven't been on and well, since I, I think like we were supposed to go live on the seventeenth, St. Patty's Day. Uh St. Patty's Day. So yeah, so it's going all the way back to St. Patrick's Day. Um and we ended up canceling for something, not going live. I don't remember. You're, you're, I don't know. I feel I, like I had something going I, on that day. Yeah, we all have. Life's been busy, <laughs> as Brian said. It is. Uh, I know we were off for a while, and then we had the kids, uh, kids can fish event that we did here. Kids can fish foundation. Make sure we tag it properly. Yep. Um, uh, event that went on, and then lots of charters. I was busy, so I, I called Brian. I was like, "Hey, I I need a break. I can't do it tonight." And he's like, "Okay, fine." I was. Uh, yeah, and then. Uh, Last week was the weigh-in for the Panhandle Salt Pompano Showdown. Um, so we got to see a lot of folks out there and talk to a lot of people um, and fish with a lot of people. But, oh. uh, yeah, and it's just life's been busy. Yeah. Yeah. And th you've had that. I've had the normal working schedule thing. It's it's just one thing after another. Hmm. I mean, it's Life just gets in the way. So, Isn't that when you went to the uh, 12s? That might have that been when I went to pull off. Yeah. I, I think that was one of yeah. them. I was like, yeah, no, I, yeah. I need. Yeah, because I had to work that Sunday. I did yeah. have to go in early that Sunday night. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That didn't sound like fun. <coughs> Straight like up not having a good time, bro. Straight up. <laughs> but, hey, it's so cool to see some comments in here. Rob, good to see Heck you, yeah. man. Yeah. Rob, what's up, buddy? Talking about the rigs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cliff, and all Texas is back out there doing his good thing. It was yeah. good to see Cliff. It was really yeah, it nice. was. Yeah, Don absolutely. And Donnie Holy came down shit. from Indiana. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're back. We're, we're, we're yeah. going back in the game. Brooks, oh, what are you snap. doing? Brooks. What's up, buddy? I think Only guys from up north watching. <laughs> I feel like he was up up the road. I think he went on yeah. something. Uh, yes, that is coming up next uh, weekend. Yeah. So if anybody... On the east coast of Florida, you got the Shoreline Showdown Surf Fishing Tournament mm -hmm. Series hosted by Fish Bites. Uh, I was supposed to be there. Unfortunately, I won't be able to because mm -hmm. I will be working. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, you, unfortunately, have an announcement on that as well. I'm not going to well, steal let, your We'll just say I won't be fishing it. We'll leave, leave yeah. it at that. Um, there we go. I'll, uh, yeah, unfortunately. I had plans of going over, but some things changed. So won't be going over now. So, yeah, exactly. Um, so, JJ, what's up? Real Coastal. Real Coastal. Good to see you guys. Check it out. JJ, JJ's been killing Drinking things. The, oh, yeah. Get, what is in the cup the, tonight? That's the Northern Waters. That's why I was showing that uh, bottle of bourbon that uh, Real Coastal bought me when they got back from vacation sometime this winter. I yeah. get wind, but 
Yeah, I'm still sipping on it as all the bottles are bourbon. We can never quit, Jack. We're just too much of a thorn in people's <laughs> side. We've just been busy, uh, man. You know how it is. You're always busy. Uh, yeah. Uh, if it, that, I think that's one of the funny things when you start talking about fishing here, you know, because I've run into it too. My show, well, my piece of the mm-hmm. podcast, I'm always like, oh, crap, how do I record? And this is our Sunday. You know, we've just finished wrapping up a full weekend worth of work. My brother was in town, so I had a bunch mm-hmm. there. I didn't get to fish. You had charters. It's just, all right, we can, we got to carve out two hours. Mm-hmm. Find a way to carve out two hours. But it's all that other stuff before the two hours you generating the report to fire off to both of us to work up us getting our notes in there, making sure we have the panhandle scroll done, making sure we get those pieces done, getting all the oh. equipment done. It's like, all right, two became four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On top of everything else that we try to get done. What there. is this? Before I don't you know. guys going, can you tell me anything about AMI Holmes beach, Bradenton, Bradenton's in, Tampa, isn't it? Right to somewhere down there. I know it's yeah. down south of here. That's where I went to it's RV school. All, so I, I, I can know. I can tell you the cops are uh, very active in Bradenton. That's probably because it's in Pinellas County. Is ah, it in Pinellas County. I think it. I think it is. I don't know if you ever watched the show, <laughs> not cops, but uh, comes on. It's life. Life PD. Oh, when that was on. They uh-huh. were always in Pinellas County. Ah. Anna Maria Island. Never hmm. been. Never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There we go. So that, yeah, don't, I don't think we got you covered, Rob. Uh, I, I'd recommend you you some of the East Coast guys and maybe the Salt Strong crew. I know the Salt Strong is yeah. predominant in the Tampa area. That is where their home is, Winter Park and all that stuff. Um, hmm. That might be a better, better uh, recommendation. Um, so you got the booze started. We got for that some, one. For some reason, I thought Salt Strong was over in the Jacks area. I don't know why. I used to think that too until yeah. yeah. Then I saw that they're yeah they're located. It's either Winter Park or yeah. Winter Garden. I think it's Winter Park. Yeah. But they're down in the south there. Yeah, somewhere. You see too, Chris. Chris texts me. Chris has been getting his. He's been getting on the stripers up in Connecticut. Oh, nice. I was a little sad. He sent me some texts. I was like, that's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I've been watching a lot of Waypoint TV lately. I wonder why. Well, I, I was watching. Well, there, there wasn't a new episode this week, but there There's was stuff on there. There really I, is. I was blown away. Like if, if you guys haven't checked it out, it's an app. Mm. It, it's all it is. But it's got all the shows, like all the Saturday morning fishing shows that used to be on, uh, TNN, the the Nashville Network, way back in the day, it was called and, Nashville and, Network. Uh, yeah, and uh, ESPN two used to have fishing shows and stuff like that. Uh, and anyway, it's like I just I get up early, I hit my coffee, I sit in my chair, and I watch a couple episodes. Like they had, uh, there's one called Tidelines, mm-hmm. and it's the uh, crap name escapes me. It's the captain from Flats class. Um, and he goes and interviews other, like he's interviewed, uh, flip pallet and, uh, uh, Shaw Grigsby, who was a bass guy, but also fishes saltwater, like all these people he goes and, uh, there was another, um, anyway, it's just pretty cool. Just, just kind of sit back and chill and watch that. And of course this morning I was catching up with the, uh, podcast, the finding demo podcast that I've missed the last couple of weeks. And, uh, so got to get those in there. It was a good, I, I really enjoyed uh, Gary's uh, Hefner's, the warrior beer one. That was, uh, that was really good. Um, and huge shout out to him for hosting the event uh, for the uh, weigh in and everything. But what an awesome story. If you guys haven't listened to that, I, I would, uh, I highly recommend going over to the finding demo surf fishing podcast page. Uh, shameless plug for him there, but, um, but, but to go over there and listen to that, because it is just an awesome story that Gary has to tell on how not only fishing and how we started fishing, but the warrior beer company and the mission and all the other, I, I was, I didn't even know about all the other organizations that he had been involved with before coming down here to do that. And just an awesome story. And they make some pretty tasty beer over there. <laughs> <laughs> a key lime will sneak up on you. Yeah. And 
So I knew it was a summer shandy, but I didn't know it was a key lime until I listened to the podcast today um, and, and figured it out that, oh, uh, that's why it tastes so yummy. <laughs> so good once it touches the lips. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that was a that was a very, very good that everything about that surprised me. I mean, I learned so much in that one alone. I didn't realize that his plans for the brewery. I didn't realize the future plans, mm -hmm. what he'd done. He's got a lot going on and that's going to be a very good staple in the Pensacola area. I'm, I'm very oh, yeah. excited. So, and I, I'm, I'm sure there will be more events and you will see our faces up there too, people. Mm -hmm. uh, there will yeah. be events had there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, before we get any further, this week's show is sponsored by Green Gidham Rigs. Best damn beach rigs out there. Uh, Green Gidham has you covered with all your rig and bead needs from the original Green Gidhams to the pink pound them and the orange crush them beads. These things catch fish. Go check them out at greengidhamrigs.com. Yeah, if this is your first time on the show, we do a weekly fishing report of the Panhandle area. Lots of good information we share with reports that we get from all facets, whether it's inshore, offshore, Beer, uh, pier and surf we also get into conversations about certain questions of the week we answer questions as you put them up in the comment section mm -hmm. as you share this out to your friends by all means we're always interactive mm -hmm. on here we will answer questions and occasionally we will squirrel down a rabbit hole that just seems to get our attention so you never know what you're yeah. going to get here on this show uh, as you've seen for 11 minutes we've been just jaw jacking having a good time because that's what yeah. we do yeah we, we, we we've said it several times that for those who have never fished with Brian and I together on the beach, this is exactly like fishing with Brian and I on the beach. It really you is. Talk, matter of fact, this picture that's behind me was uh -huh. taken on one of the trips that you and I were on. And if you look right there, that little black dot uh, that's right there that. on uh -huh. the screen, that's actually a dolphin. captured. Uh -huh. It was captured just perfectly as he was coming up. Not here. I was oh. thinking I had a speck oh. on my screen. Nice. No, that's that's a dolphin fin, and there's a. I think there's an RC fishing surfer. Yep, there's the antennas behind. Me. Your, yeah, your chair's yeah. blocking. Yeah. But, chair's hey, blocking. But, yeah. Does the job. Yeah. That was that was when you what earlier got it, and that was in the beginning time frame. Yeah. Yeah. God, I remember the testing phases of that. Mm. Let's we'll see how much weight you can put on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, like, like we said, things have been busy. Um, AMP certification you got, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. During that time, uh, we did the Kids Can Fish Foundation event, which was a huge event for this area. So everybody who showed up and and the coaches and everybody, what an awesome event! Hats off to to you, Brian, for for setting that up and and and. Working in conjunction, being the, the the POC here in this area to kind of get things going and uh, the, you know, corralling all the coaches and then and then making sure that the uh, Tom and those guys were set up when they when they hit hit the ground. Um, huge event. And it's going to be bigger next year in this area, I think. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Town side of things going well. We're going to make it bigger and better. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. But. I think we're, I mean, hell, if we keep it upright, we might be able to align that whole area there. Friggin', we were at 30 mm -hmm. rods. We could get 50. We could get 50. I don't yeah, want we to, had, but we could. I think we had 50 some kids that showed up. 30 some were 33, 33. families plus. So we did yeah. 33 rods, and it was mm -hmm. very, yeah, we got some stuff. We had some great lessons learned, and it was mm -hmm. great they came. I mean, I, yeah, that yeah. was the first time they left Georgia. Our, stuff that far out and they normally go yeah. down to jacks and that but yeah that was that one worked out really well i'm really glad how that played and all the kids had a great day nothing mm -hmm. wrong with any of that so super rock star and thank you to all the coaches y'all were great y'all made that thing the yeah. bestest ever yeah that was that was a good time that was fun um and then last weekend you know we mentioned it earlier but we did the uh we were there for the way in for the uh uh panhandle salt pompano showdown um, you, me and, and Mr. Larry Grossman up on stage there weighing in and announcing and, and just having a good time. And those, you know, we, we've said it before on the tournament side, the get togethers and the weigh ins are by far the best part of, of the tournaments. Um, mm -hmm. 
just just being able to to get around and talk to everybody, folks you haven't seen in a while. Uh, uh, Brian from Deerfield being there. Um, uh, Jason from Redfin, right? Jason's his name. Yeah. Um, yep. uh, we met a new uh, the guy with the floats, the pant, the I can't even remember Pompano something floats. Anyway, oh, sorry, you're I don't remember. Chris. You're talking about yeah, Chris. Yeah. Chris yeah, yeah. Was- yeah. Um, and then Deerfield was in it. Brian from Deerfield was in town. And uh, of course, Cr- uh, Cliff with the uh, Green Get'em rigs. I mean, it's just always such a great time when all of us get together and just, it just goes to show and Tony from Fish Gum and, and everybody, it just goes to show how large the surf fishing community is, but yet so small and, and personable at the same time, I guess. Yeah. The hard thing, and I know this is going to sound like I'm complaining, but I'm partially complaining. The hardest part is, is when you want to spend the time, you know, like for us, we'd, we'd love to spend 30, 40 minutes with people having conversations. Um, but when you got a couple hundred people together and you're still doing the way and you're still doing all those pieces, like I feel horrible. I didn't get enough mm-hmm. time. Bruce, I uh, love you, man. I wish yeah, you had Bruce. Time. Bruce, great. You know, he brought me a new uh, plate, which I'll get up online soon. I got to talk to his wife. We're going to work on something Good. to try this. to beef up those. Yep. Our stickers. Yep. Stickers. We got, got mine done. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I wish I'd have got more time with everybody that I had a conversation with. It was very, it was, it, it was meant well. I am sorry if I didn't get more time with you. I know Mike feels the same, but it's just mm-hmm. when you get that busy, it gets nuts. So. Good to see everybody. Great time. Good event. Well organized. Well played out. Um, I think he's got it in a groove now. I'm glad that we got to do the way, and it's always fun to care, catch the fish and see what they got, and what they're bringing up. It's always good times. And then yeah. you've been, and then finally you've been slammed, slammed with charters. The season is hot. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about fishing, uh, the, the report, the beach fishing, but you know, inshore, offshore. I've, I've done, been doing a lot of boat fishing. Uh, Beach chart. I mean, it's just fishing is good. A- April is the what I consider the second best month of fishing here in the area, with October uh, being the first for me. Like, like I think October yeah. is the best for for fishing, um, and then followed closely by April, and then depending on what kind of fishing, end of June into July is good too. Ooh, that's yeah. bold. That's bold. Well, so, but I, I gotta, I, I have to remove my bias on surf fishing oh, okay. and I have to open it up to, that's why. I mean, I like October what you said. is hot for uh, October is hot for all around fishing. Yep. Um, there's a reason the Dustin rodeo happens that month. Um, April is another one that that's hot. All, you know, things are getting fired up inshore offshore you know surf pier everything and then the the third segment of that would be june to july and that's for snapper fishing and everything else that you get when you go offshore and inshore the the, the grass flats are firing up the redfish the specs i mean it's just surf fishing not so much if we get affected by june grass you know those hot mornings it's uh you, you can throw some stuff and catch some stuff right off the beach, but set rig fishing gets a little tougher. In those I, I, we've, we've talked about this before, but mm-hmm. like middle of summer, dead of winter, that is the time. If you're a surf angler, you, that's the time where you really have to just move on and get into other facets. You got to get into a yeah. kayak. You got to start doing piers. You got to do bridges. You got to, you got to change it up. If you want to be an all encompassing, it's just part of it. I, I am guilty of it. I have loved the surf. That's my happy um, yeah. but, you know, sometimes you just got to change it up a little bit. Uh Oh, what happened over I'm there? Sorry. My green screen was bothering me. So oh, that, it was that like flappy. flapping and get the ceiling fan going. And it's anyway, that little thing was bothering me there. My yeah, OCD <laughs> <up there. laughs> yeah, no. uh, <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, my cough so, anyway, ridiculous. Yeah, it's all good. All right, so uh, we've been into all that. So let's go ahead. Yeah. Let me let's get into the fun stuff here. Let's get into the tournament sales and seminars. Uh, yeah. So I, I listed this one under the sales and seminars, but really it should have gone under opening and closures because 
we're getting a full month of Amberjack uh, opens up. Amberjack opens up one May through thirty one May. Um, so, and there's some nice Amberjack being caught now. So I'm sure they'll stick around for another week and a half or so. They'll be out there. Um, but we got the uh, Gulf Coast Sportsman Seminar Series with Hatch Half Hitch Thirty A Light Tackle. And Legendary Marine, that'll be on 7 May, which is the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, topic is going to be Red Snapper Fishing and Black Snapper. Um, I really like the way that series has have things lined up because they're about a month ahead of where that species is coming into season. Because normally our snapper season opens up sometime in June and runs through July. So if you have a seminar in May... You figure out what you need, you get it so that you're ready to fish it um, when the uh, when the season rolls around. So that's a pretty good one. And then the uh, Hot Spots Charter Seminar Series at Flounders Chowder House will be 6 May. That's the uh, first Monday. So dinner served at 630. There's always a fried fish dinner um, that accompanies that. And then uh, the seminar starts at 7. And they usually have some great giveaways as well when they do those. So. And not many sales coming up. Everybody, no. I mean, they, they typically run into wintertime. Not many summer I feel sales. Like, I feel like you, you grab what you grab on the, the ones we know of and then mm -hmm. run away. Yeah, so. pretty much. Well, well all right. Well, uh, let's get into the tournament, AJC. How are you? Uh, we'll rock into the tournament here. So we got Gulf Breeze Bait and Tackle tournament still rocking into, uh, hmm. what is this? April still? Yeah, we're still in April. Mm -hmm. Sheep's Head still going until the 31st. They're still being caught, which I love. I still can't believe they're caught, but they're still being caught. Uh, Pompano Tournament is still ongoing until May 31st. Fish Bite Shoreline, Shoredown Series, and the Panhandle goes in May 18th. So that's a couple mm -hmm. more routes next month coming up. They've got theirs coming up next weekend on the east coast of Florida. It's going to be a whole different series. You can get points and run through. The Island Pier 2024 Spring Mackerel Tournament uh, mm -hmm. for the Okaloosa Pier. Year. that's going to be starting tomorrow 22 april to 2 june it's not just mackerel there's a couple of other cool things on there so make sure you go over to uh, take a look at their page on facebook all the information is on there through the website stinky's bait shack they're still doing their tournament 31 march to 5 may so you still can get in on that and go through it's on the scroll tonight they got some pretty good leaders on there uh sid sid's on that damn board of course he is i saw it i was like of course on he's stinky's up there. Yeah, Sid's on there. Said, yeah, nice. <laughs> I was like, if Sid's good not on there, I'd be surprised. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's back. So Sid's doing the good things he is. Um, and then moving a little bit further on, looking longer range, you got Navarre Fishing Rodeo in October. Mm -hmm. You got the Destin Rodeo in October. Lots of cool stuff coming up. So you got plenty to do now and plenty to see. Bone Secure's got some more stuff going. Uh, they had the bass tournament today. But mm -hmm. I'm still trying to track in on tournaments. So if any of you guys have any tournaments, don't hesitate. Let me know. I can get them on the Panhandle Fishing Report so we can get them out there. So everyone can go fish them and have a good time. That's the most important thing. Heck, yeah. Awesome. All right. Question of the week. Question of the week is brought to you by Rogue Reels Fishing. Use code ROGUE20 to save 20% off your order. Rogue Reels makes quality hand-tied fishing leaders like the Smitty Rig, a 20-foot, 500-pound class deployment shark leader. And the Demo Rig, a heavy-duty double-drop rig. Go check them out at Rogue Reels. That's R-E-E-L-Z, fishing.com. So, I, we, we, we had a question, but I don't think we asked, asked it because it was in our notes for the 317 show. So, I wonder if we should go back and do that one. Yeah, why not? You got that up or you need me to pull it up? Yeah, well, because this one was okay, but I was like, mm, that's not as engaging as as the other one was. Hang on. I, I think I got it, unless you have it open already. Uh, yeah. Was it 3-3? Three, three? Uh, 317. Uh, I have 3-3 three, three for some reason. Uh, Please stand by. Uh, See, there's a new Deadpool movie coming. <laughs> hey bruce we were just talking about you a little while ago man we're very thankful for the stickers mm. and all look forward to seeing you 
It's on my, it's on the other. Hard heads. Yes, JC, my rig will handle hard heads. No problem. But it's also <laughs> designed for boats. So you can double drop it while you're out there in the mm-hmm. Gulf going after red snapper many times over. Yeah. It will take, it'll take some abuse. Bingo trigger. It'll, it'll do well. Um, Actually, we'll go with this one for this week because okay. it's on the other hard drive. So the one this week is how do you think fishing this year is or has been compared to this time last year? Better. Um, last so? year was late. Yeah. I Oddly, my brain is so. I've looked at my memories, and when I saw this, I went back and looked. I feel like everything last year was later. Um, mm-hmm. This year, yeah. it seemed like the run began earlier, and it's holding longer. Hey, Brian, good to see you. Um, I'm noticing. I've seen more. Uh, I've seen. Oh my gosh, why can't I think of the word slams? I've seen more slams right now this time than I did mm-hmm. last year. Because last year we didn't start seeing slams till May and June, I yeah. remember that piece. But yes, yeah, and then the the king, everything else has been right on time. The well, the kings were a little late. We did have the squids on time. Everything else was mm-hmm. shortly behind it. But I think it's better this year. And what are your thoughts? I one hundred percent agree uh, that it's better this year. Um, and I don't know can't put my finger on why um i, I you know J- jc brings up the weather's been better so far this year um which which i can i can see that playing a a factor um but i don't think like i wonder if the and i, I thought it would be the opposite but i wonder if the fact that we never got any june grass last year plays a part into the fishing being better this year. I figured it would have been worse because June grass does serve a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. For, for, for smaller organisms to thrive, um, which, which then, you know, plays into the larger organisms that eat them and then to the fish and everything else. So when you didn't have that, I wonder, I wondered if it would affect the fish that we would see this year. You know what I mean? Like I wonder, it, I wonder if anyway. the lack of June grass hurt us on the fall piece. Cause we were really weird with the fall, but then again, yeah, maybe so thermal nuclear on the fall. We were like, why is it damn 90 degrees in Miami? And we were yeah. panicking. I remember the couple of hurricanes mm-hmm. were like, oh, better turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, what did last year we had a bad cold snap, snap mid April? I don't know if you tonight and tomorrow it's supposed to be pretty chilly, <laughs> so that's our cold snap. What is bad as 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 last year, but um, but yeah, that that, that probably is. It was a lot of grass just coming to shore. Yeah, the sargassum showing up, and I love. Uh-huh. I mean, I can live with sargassum. That's that chunky yeah. stuff. You do a couple of flips, there she goes off. That's yeah. for sure. But uh. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think weather is definitely improving this year for those. I, I'm excited for that, and hopefully it continues on. That that'd be that'd be great. Hi, Andy. Yeah, what's up, Andy? Um, yeah. So I I think it's better, and I think it's better not only in the beach because that's a lot of what we focus on, but I mean it's it's pretty hot inshore as well. Uh, trout bite has been really good, um, and the. The mingo bite has been pretty steady, like from the winter all down um, to now. You know, there's still being huge things. It that could also be as well, Tony, because you know it goes back to the the June grass mm-hmm. type that, stuff that and a little cool. organism because. There hasn't been as many bad chlorine mornings as what was compared to last year. Mm-hmm. And that was Tony. You've been here forever. You may think I think you even said that was the worst you'd ever seen of an acorn worm invasion. Because um, mm-hmm. I mean, that was what 
where are we at now? We're going into spring. That was the fall. And, and we had a lot of weird things happen that we hadn't seen before. You know, we, we saw a major decline on all those pieces uh, as we were talking about them. But with the, the change up from the June grass, the way the water was so hot, there, there was just so many different factors that played into last year. I, mm-hmm. I, I can't help but wonder what that did. And this year, our temperatures, you know, we were saying a couple of days ago, wow, it's still on the nice chilly side, but it's right at Pompano chilly. So mm-hmm. uh, it, I think there is, though those are all interconnected. That's just me. And, and I, I mean, I, I love that you, wait, let me rephrase this the right way. Though we concentrate on the beach, I think the beach has another play when it comes to everything else because the way that that water moves with the currents from the Gulf moving into the inshore, moving all of that, you know, that's kind of the big window into the small windows. So mm-hmm. I, I, don't know, I kind of look at it that way. Yeah, hundred percent. It it uh, you know it's funny when when uh, when we have trips and and I'll bring up. Um, You know, we're, we're lucky here in Florida that we can harvest ghost shrimp like we do. Yeah. In certain areas of the country, you are restricted on how much ghost shrimp you can actually bring. Texas, Texas. comes to mind. Texas. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> believe it or not, Oregon and Washington State is another big producer of ghost shrimp. Hmm. I figured for them it was those so, sandworms. No, nope. so I was I was trying to figure out and doing research on how to farm ghost shrimp. Like I know it can be done. It's got to be able to be done. Mike's gonna have a ghost shrimp farm. What? Okay, uh, you, you like? I'm pot committed now. Yeah, like like when you start when when you start looking at it, and somebody may pick it up and run with it, and that's fine too. But like, like there's got to be a way because right now, and I think Tony had mentioned it before too, is when you go, anyone who goes out and pumps ghost shrimp, right? You got them. You usually go out the day before or night prior at the, at the latest, at the earliest you can go, or at the earliest, at the latest you go the morning of at like, Oh, dark 30 and pump up a bunch of shrimp. Right. But they're good for that day. And then you get into the next day, they start dying off. And by the third day, what do you do with them? You know, I mean. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Sorry. There, there, there's things you can do with them, <laughs> I, I will say. <laughs> but um, how do you keep them alive for for longer periods of time? And then I was like, well, you got to be able to, how, how do you. How could you harvest them? Does anybody else in the country like harvest them? Can you buy them like sea monkeys? You know what I mean? Like, like, like we've been off air for a long time. So this is the kind of things I've been thinking about. Um, You've had when, when, when we're not doing, yeah, when we're not doing this. Um, and, and, you know, I'm looking out in my backyard and I'm like, okay, if I have a stock tank, cause I have a stock tank pool that's in our deck that sits down into our deck. And I was like, I wonder if I could just get another stock tank and get it salt water, everything, and then put them in there so that it keeps them going. You realize by doing this, you're opening a whole nother door, not related to our show. It's to your mm-hmm. other job. That's going mm-hmm. to cause you more. 100%. 100%. Deal with. You don't need that headache in your life. You you don't need that, man. Don't do it. Stay um, away from the light, man. Don't go. So so if if you and and to Tony's point, yeah, it's very traumatic to be sucked out of a hole. And they already have such a fragile body. Phrasing. And and then you yeah right. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I relate it to like clients when we're they're like, how do you get them? How do you get these things? Um, I was like, imagine if you were in your chair watching TV, and then all of a sudden you're like violently ripped out of the top of your house through the chimney, right? It's gonna We're going to suck you up out of the chimney. Uh, and yeah, it, it's got to be traumatic. But there, there, there is a lot more I have seen in this area, a lot more holes on the beach. 
this year. Yeah. They are having if, a lot if, more if, if you get out to the closest sandbar and kind of walk that, there are there are ghost shrimp holes out there. They're not as abundant as other places, but there are there are holes out there. Um which is interesting. But yeah, you're right. We are talking about um I'm all in the hell. This is deep conversation. This is that's what your that's what your Northern Waters Distillery Bourbon has done to me. <laughs> You've created this. This is your fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh. you know, and and there, there there's other ways to keep them and use them, but it's a uh, yeah. It's like, how could you like farm them so that they would be self sustaining? Uh, anyway, a field of, I mean, can you imagine having a field of viable ghost shrimp full of vitality, full of energy, full strength, not broken down and completely just, you know, yeah. for lack of better terms, Ted, just mm -hmm. there. That, yeah. that could I mean, their pinchers hurt. I can only imagine when they're on full defense. So, yeah, because by the third day, they've turned into that dull yellow, mushy, yeah. You know, they're not the bright orange and stuff. And the the species of ghost shrimp that we have here is different than what's on the East Coast. Yeah. And the West, from what I remember too. Mm -hmm. The West Coast variety has a different uh different makeup. I mean they look they look very similar, but there is a different makeup that the East Coast shrimp are bigger, um, and they they're more. I don't know if cellulose is the right word. They're fattier. That's the best way to say yeah. it. I'm walking in Walmart. Folks <laughs> heard the chimney part and looked up. <laughs> we suck in shrimp, boys. That's right. <laughs> mm. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. They are, anyway, so I mean, the the fun part, is, and I hate the. Like you made a great point here. Once you got day one, they're great. Day two, man. Day three, yeah. Uh, you know, come day three, they're if I still have ghost shrimp and they don't smell god awful, they're going into mesh bags. I mean, I am mm -hmm. launching them out cheesecloth style. I'm doing that one because it's still got some scent. You can play with it past three. I don't think past three, they're doing anything good personally. Yeah. I mean, when you got yeah. them in that whole condition, then you get them into the other condition, different story. We can have that conversation. Yeah. But, yeah, I think those are good ones. That's a great question, man. You built up a good one. Yeah. We need to do more shows. This way it uh, you know we need Let's to, we, do them every Sunday. Sunday. Let's just do Let's them do on it every Sunday. Why not? Yeah. Because it's that it, it gets my uh refrigerated. Yeah, you you, you gotta keep them cool. That's one thing. And oh, uh uh yeah. Georgia. Yeah, you you throw a throw a friggin' ghost shrimp in Georgia and see what happens. You ain't getting nothing but a damn giant ray within three minutes. See, which is weird because if you want to catch a ray here off the beach, you guaranteed can't use shrimp. You can't use ghost shrimp. You better use squid. Yep, squid gets it done. If, if, if squid will up, get a ray, squid, yeah, hop on right when we're talking yeah. about Georgia. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Anyway, good That's stuff. Good, good topic. So we could go down the weird on that rabbit hole right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, cut, I'll cut your friggin' line. You're bringing in mm -hmm. a friggin' ray like that? I'm cutting your friggin' line. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into the, let, let's move on before okay. we do what we really do. Here. All right. All right. It's fishing reports being brought to you by GI Jigs. Use code PFR code to save 10%. GI Jigs are patented, handmade jig head custom designed around the eye and made with unique characteristics to entice fish and reaction strikes. Check them out. GI Jigs.com. I will say I was on a charter recently with GI jigs that I introduced another captain to. And we, he was amazed that we were tearing up the Spanish. Like we were off the, off the GI jigs. I gave him like a handful of them. I said, here, try these. They were this and that. And he's like, he's like, hey, I'll give them a try. He goes typically just throw like gotchas or something like that. Or actually, well, you can also throw small pompano jigs as well at the uh, and catch a, a butt ton of Spanish. But when he when he tied on the GI jigs, he was like, "Holy crap!" And even when the 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 flash goes off the J hook on the end, 
it's still catching fish. And then they're spitting up rain minnows in the boat. And I'm like, yeah. it's why it works so well. Anyway. All right. Offshore report. <laughs> Mingo and trigger bite has been hot. Uh, mangrove snapper, large schools of bandit rudderfish are also on all the near shore spots. Amberjack, big trigger fish, red snapper, gags. I mean, you name it, you're catching it right now. April, second best month down here uh, for fishing. Um, inshore, offshore, for all around fishing, as we discussed earlier. Now's the time to get offshore and uh, check on those spots. So when season opens up, you're ready to go and you got it all dialed in. Um, and there's still some tuna being caught if you want to go out and start trolling some mahi as well, starting to show up, but yeah, you got to go deeper for that. Oh no, not that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, neighbor has mentioned the party boats are killing it for a lack of better yeah. words. He said, we're wearing them out, man. It is yeah. long days. They're crushing it. So if you don't want to get on a private one, you want to get on the party boats, You'll get a stack guaranteed. Definitely look up the local charters. We got a lot of really good ones here. If you've been waiting to do one of those big mm-hmm. trips for your buddies, cut the cost between you. You can get out there and get some good ones. Inshore, yeah. the slams, 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 slams. I've seen a few Slam. of them. Red. Red the boys, the boys. Now we're going to get, get flagged <laughs> and freaking copyright and get cut off again. Yeah. Uh whoever you were in your English novel, uh, mm-hmm. red Spanish and a few flounder definitely popping up. It's been picking up so you can get after a lot. There are still sheeps being caught, which I still don't understand. But then again, my mm-hmm. tiny brain can't comprehend that, but yes, lots of really good fishing on the inshore side to get out there, whether you're in the boat, the kayak have at it. Yeah. We got some nice sheep head the other day. It was, they were tasty. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. But I still don't. So, so Jack had never had sheephead. Um, so when he tried it, he was like, I don't see what all the hype is. Like, it's not like that great of fish. Like, I'm like, oh, teach their own. Anyway. Red snapper is not that great of fish. Not really. No. I will, I'll say it. To, to me, that's in a whole nother rabbit hole we'll go down. But <laughs> fish, it really depends on how you cook it for one. But fish is fish is fish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it all, it all tastes good. It's like very you know, minor differences. Minor. Yeah. yeah. Like anyway, but uh, surf fishing, Pompano, Pompano, Pompano. That is uh, pretty much all that's hitting the beach right now. Um, there are some big black drum that are still being caught. Some Spanish are starting to hit casting lures off the beach and, Sharks are still plentiful at nighttime. You're going to get some sharks if you go out at night. Um, what? But sharks at the beach? I know, no sharks way. at the beach? No way. It's uh, But yeah, the beach is, is fired up right now, and everybody is lined up to catch Pompano. Um, not as many redfish being caught. There are some nice black drum getting caught, but uh, mainly it's limit after limit of Pompano. Yay. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> 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 uh, it's good to see them back though because mm-hmm. we had a really short run last time so it's nice to actually see this happening now and some good yeah. numbers justin picked up a very nice almost four pounder so i yeah. think that was his new pb that was a great fish yeah. all right rocking the piers i'm just gonna nail them all because they're all pretty much reporting the same thing here we got spanish pompano blues jacks hardtails a couple of cobia and a couple of kings lots Ooh. of good opportunities so get out there and take a look call your local one For those of you guys that don't know this, I mean, I'm not a smart man. Seriously, really not. But I call the peer and they answer and they tell me what's going on. And then I go, oh, I think I'll go do that. Andy, I'm in the middle of the show. I can't answer your text messages. What are you doing? What are you doing? I know you're Andy. Come on, Andy. Um, So, yeah, lots of really, really good fish going on right now with that. So good stuff. Definitely worth getting out there and taking a look at the peers. Uh, Absolutely worth your time. Have at it. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. Let's roll into weather for next week. It's a pretty good report. Everything is hitting right now. Just get out there and fish. Share screen. I'm doing? trying oh. to get mine rebuilt here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I'll like jump that. in. The damn there we go. All right. Wind finder. That's what I like to use lately. Uh, bounce back and forth between that and uh, 
Windy and a couple other ones, but Windfinder seems to be pretty spot on. And it gives a quick, convenient little snapshot of what's happening. So um, tomorrow, wind's going to start shifting, coming north. Um, but then it starts turning later in the day from the northeast. Not bad. North's going to be nice. Maybe blow some of that dirty water out of here. Tuesday, look at that. It's coming east, shifting, shifting, boom. That's when we get our nice south wind at 10 to 12. That's going to be nice with a low tide about 4 o'clock. So, I mean, Tuesday to me, if I were to pick a day to go out there, well, I'm going to pretty much fish every day, but this time right here, about 4 p.m., low tide, when it starts coming back up, seems to have been hot recently. Uh, Wednesday, again, blowing out of the south. Light winds all week. Um, Thursday, out of the south, 8 to 10. Friday, a little sporty, but not too bad. Midday, still a great day to get out there. Sea state, you know, 2 foot, 2.3, perfect. And then we get into Saturday next week, which all that could change. But wave height comes up oh, about 3, and then we get some heavy south winds but next week looks fantastic for all sorts of fishing yep um get out there and, and hit it well bradley girl same <laughs> it's always win that one i wish that'd be nice man if you do catch one i mean we, there's always that one lightning strike fish you never know that's what i love about mm -hmm. this you and no berry we get yeah. one a day. That one, gosh, you're so bougie with your two. God, does it? It doesn't play. So yeah, it doesn't <laughs> on the beach anyway. It doesn't play a huge. Doesn't play a factor. Ish a factor. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Play doesn't a factor play. in fishing. Now inshore, sure, it plays a factor. Yep, we, we will absolutely. But here yeah, on, the, on the other stuff, doesn't. You had three today. Yep. Nope. Oh, nope. I think we had two today. Oh, did we? Because. Today was actually a uh, a neap tide day. Let's see. Uh, and we might have two tomorrow. Let's see here. Anyway, go ahead with your report and I'll look it up. <laughs> All Just right. So I, think the winds, we, I think we have two. We got a high, as you can see here off to the left. Right above that high, though, we got a low. And that's going to sneak down. And that's going to create a little bit of havoc here. So taking a look, we got the winds, like Mike was saying. Winds are going to kind of play into a little bit of a factor here. We got the tail coming off there, as you can see, 14 knots. That's Monday, but it's going to start getting better as this high passes us. Remember, high pressure falling is always nice. We can't really – never a bad day with high pressure falling. Um, there is that low in the upper left corner. It, what's going to take that energy that's sucking off the clockwise motion from the high into the counterclockwise of the low? So that's where you get that flip around Mike was talking about. We're going to get a change in that. Winds are going to increase more towards Friday. It's going to be a little bit funky, but you can still play with it. Wave height is still going to stay very comfortable, so it's not going to be that bad to go with that. Wind's going to be your, kind of your only real big factor to think about uh, as far as directions. Uh, next weekend, going to get breezy, but you know, pay attention to it because obviously you know how it is. It, it changes every damn week for us, ladies and gentlemen. You never know what it's going to bring. So there's Friday, and here comes the high stuff because you can see the orange right there. Backing into that, something else. Well, you you know, I always bring it up. I'm gonna find my wire. Is my where's my thing? Yeah, boy. Uh, Radar. No. Good. Waves. Menu. There it is. It moved from when I did my earlier plan. Oh. I was like, that's not that's not where I put that button. Where are you? Where are you? Currents. currents currents are looking very nice there they are okay so mm. we've talked about these before um this vortex is getting very interesting this one has died down quite a bit which is kind of weird and as you can see this car current has pushed way off of jacks in the east coast here it's moving back to where it normally does for that time of year still got the good run running down here so uh with us though something i always like to take a look at as you can see it's rolling out here 0.2 knots kind of plays with the wind but look at the split coming out of destin boats go around here come out of pensacola 
boats come around here. So the currents are looking really nice, and they're going to change up. It's going to die off a little bit as the wind changes. Heavier on the pieces here as things go out through the week, but here's Monday. Dies off. So currents are worth always taking a look at to see what's going on for the fishing because you know that has to play into the fact of the activity. Worth taking a look at. So I think weather's going to be nice next weekend. Take a look Wednesday to get an idea of what it really is going to be and then kind of go from there. We had three tides today, and tomorrow we have four tides with really? a max move with a max movement of one foot. Ooh. Will be our max. That's deep. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, tomorrow four. Tomorrow we have four. Today we have uh, shut the front door. I'm serious, Barry. I don't know what we're gonna do. I know. Oh, today that's what I want to look at. And today we had three, yeah. Wednesday, we have, there's four tides on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we go back to our twos, highs and lows. Very so, nice. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, I guess we're going <sighs> into scrollage. All right. And into scroll time. And those scrolls being brought to you by Salty's Pompano Rigs. From single drop to double drop, Salty's got you covered with premium hand-tied rigs. Also with some pretty cool sinker, or stickers. Almost said sinkers. I don't know why mm -hmm. I said that. He doesn't make sinkers. <laughs> his stickers. Uh, his shirt, super comfortable. And uh, go take a look. Check it out. Salty's Pompano Rigs yeah. com. Yes, I know. You should see my legs, Barry. They are... Are you cooked? Yeah. Are you a little lobster-esque? Yeah, that's... Uh... I think it's just the camera, though. It's not that bad, but it does. Uh, I actually thought you had a red light on or like you were using your multi-light. Uh, I, I do have a multi-light on, so that may be causing probably it. enhancing it. Yeah, enhance. But you're right. I, I need I need more uh, sunscreen. If I back up like this, it looks like my face is like totally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, so it's the, it's the light. It's the light. Huh. You feel oh, this, uh, not so much here or here, sure, right. but right in here, it's like <laughs> anyway. Uh, Dustin, what's up, buddy? All right, uh, and handle scroll. I do have Am a few. Doing, are you got you got some or I, I, I got a few. I don't have many, but okay, I have a few. Let's go here. There. Oh, hey, look at that. Hey, that's us. It's me. Um. You go to that's my safe. Side. <laughs> no, that's my good side. Uh, come on. There we go. All right. As I said, bingo bite and the trigger bite has been pretty good. Check out that trigger fish. This is uh that's Blue it. Water Escape Charters out of uh, Fort Walton Beach there. That's a nice one. Another good one, Bandit Rudder Fish. We talked about those as well in the report. Those are That's a nice setup right there. Plus mingos. Plus, I mean, it's just April is such a good time to fish. Uh, are we going through all these? Oh, did we say amberjacks? Boom, amberjack too. Look at that. Boat up on light tackle. What? Did we say red snapper? Whoa. Oh. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, anyway, red grouper. Nice. Uh, anyway, so get out there. Offshore, there's a nice black drum, big yeah, ugly. It's a big one. Yeah, where to go, Scott? That was a good 20 minute fight. He says, "Boom, nice fish." Um, who else we got? Oh, this is from our buddy, Mr. Mark Hotes at 38 Light Tackle. If you haven't seen this one, this is an awkward spot to get hooked. Ow, that hurts me. He got, I mean, that's a nice trigger fish, but he got him right in the butt hole. Uh, that's a good one. I don't know how you do that, but that's got him. That's where you <laughs> stop fighting, but it hurts more than that. It's hard. Just stop fighting. Uh, hot spots charters, hot Spanish bite. Boom. Nice on the, on the close stuff right there, man. It's uh, I'm telling you, Spanish bite is hot right now. Everything is just on fire. In the bays. Uh, another hot spot chart. Look, I brought this one up because what is Colombia. that fish there? <gasps> I know. We've seen a lot more of those this spring so far. Um, and some nice trigger down here, some scamps, some mingo. I mean, it's April. I'm telling you, it's a good time to fish down here. 
Boom. Another one, some sheepies. Did someone say sheep head? Bam. Jeez, that's some good sheeps. Yeah. And a nice flounder to boot. So. Yeah, I was going to say flatty on there. Yeah. More, more sheep head and a red fit. I mean, it's just a good, good day to go do some fishing. And where are we at here? Oh, this one off the pier. That's a heck of a jack right there. Jack. Yeah. Uh, that's today. Yeah, it's today's report. So jack, Spanish, pompano, bluefish. Nice. Just amazing. I love Okaloosa Island Pier. They're such a good, it's, they do such great stuff with their social. They do. It's, it's a, uh, I, I just love living down here. And out of all the places I've been stationed and gone to and everything else, the fishery down here is just amazing. You can fish all year long for something. Yep. It's great. There's, yes. Did you see the, uh, there's a couple of fresh ones. I didn't save it because I'm not a freshwater fisherman because I suck at freshwater fishing. Um, lots of panfish being caught, like mm -hmm. lots of panfish being caught. Mm -hmm. Um, I, why do I keep clicking that same button? I am so out of practice. Mm. We should do this like we should we should do this like every Sunday night. We should, you know, and we'd probably get better. We'd get into a routine. <laughs> I think I, for some reason I think you're onto something there, buddy. Yeah, maybe. All right. So the leaderboard right now at Stinkies is going quite nicely, as you can see there. Leader rocking in, Scott at 3.61 in the adults, Graham at 2.71 in the kids. Mm. Pro side, you've got Sid rocking in at 3.8 in the Calcutta, Red Whiting and Pompano. Nice stack up right there. Some good fish, so you can still get in on this tournament. Really good one right there. This was an upcoming, oh, yeah. It's an upcoming it's kayak. Mobile, the Mo kayak. Yep, Mobile, Ca Mobile Bay Kayak Fishing Association. I apologize. It wasn't on my uh Oh, my report, I'll get it there for next week. Uh, we'll make sure I update that before I close off tonight. May 18th, 5 a.m. to 3. So if you want to get in on the kayak tournament, there you go. There's going to be a good one there. A couple of names. Oh, who's going? Who's, who's going? Oh, well, I'll have to look at that later. I don't want to get James. too I don't want to get too distracted. Yeah. Rizzo. It's Rizzo. Nice. <laughs> Rizzo out there catching some good ones. He got three reds. I think he's actually double in my scroll because he got a slam. Mm. Nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Cheyenne's back. Yep. I've even though she got completely and oh. utterly cooked. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want to up your game? Follow the Southern <laughs> Yankee. Yeah. She's got she's got some stuff coming. Uh you might want to be subscribed. But yeah, Risotto. I, I can't do it right, but I would find a way to make it this way. Mm. And grill palm. Mm. That is a meal. That is a gourmet meal. Great job. It does Cheyenne. look pretty gourmet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's not that's not for this. Yeah. <laughs> though, though it is funny. <laughs> it is funny. But I <laughs> I'll surf Casco. They're yeah. getting back in on them crushing them up they've been doing some really good job on catching some good pumps lots of fun stuff you might notice something there weird that's on a different mm. type of rig how weird oh, wish i knew more about it uh here's the spring mackerel tournament for okaloosa island pier it's going to do a video isn't it it sure enough is mm. so yep go to the uh okaloosa island pier all the information is going to be back on there on their page that way you can get in on this tournament if you want to that again they do great things um, if you're a diver in May, they're going to have their cleanup day. Mm -hmm. All right. This post, dude, I I saw this and I instantly wanted to go into full troll mode. Mm -hmm. It really pissed me off. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, lack of better terms. No shit. Mm -hmm. um, this is the comment, though, that I was like, okay, local. But then the response not all people. If you come down here and you go to any other state to fish, know the damn regulations. Learn the regulations. Ask the yeah. friggin' tackle shops. Yeah. I th there are not many things that I will get annoyed about and friggin' get on my soapbox, though you guys know I love to. Mm. This one just bothered the piss out of me. And I you know, know it really grinds my gears. Oh, it really grinds my gears. <laughs> yeah. The people that come down to Florida and think they can catch friggin' shocks without a permit. Yeah. Ugh. 
it's just ugh. anyway. Mm-hmm. Snook candy. <laughs> oh, sh- <laughs> you just had to say it. I feel gone yeah. like four months without hearing it. <laughs> I didn't say it. Barry said it. I just repeated what did Barry, Barry said. Did Barry put it? Oh, I can't even see the comments right now. Barry, <laughs> I hope your lunch this week is stale at least once. Florida man fishing. Cool new setup from the Bird of Prey. Uh, yeah. The tailgate. The tailgate. Yeah. Station. Brian's done great things with this, and he's got a lot more coming, so you better be paying attention. If this is something you're looking for, uh, reach out to him. He's got some really cool mm-hmm. ideas that are coming from this, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Definitely yeah. need to be following. Um, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. This was our previous one where I wasn't here. First Kobe oh, of the yeah. year from the VARP here by yeah. Dalton. That's a decent 20-pounder. Holly bait and tackles are a really good place to go if you're not running by 87 and then when you're there, get some food. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Go over to where you at. Because where, where you at is delicious. Mm-hmm. Uh, they finished up the Sheep's Head tournament. You see, that was April 1st. We've been off a little while. Yep. John got his 12.3. It held Daniel. I thought for sure he was going to go away that other one, but it was just under. Yeah. So he held in with that with an 8.9 and Chris with 8.4. I think Holly's going to be doing a lot more of these tournaments. So make sure you're following that. Nice. Anybody recognize this redheaded stepchild? That's come not him, your, is it? Come get, oh, your, it is. Kid. Come get yeah. your friggin' kid. Yeah, April Fools. That's like friggin' Colin. Colin's a hell of an angler. If you have, is. really is lots of great knowledge. But uh, the kings are starting to be caught now, so go go ahead. You, you can get after it. Uh, Ooh, what's that? Uh-huh. Snappers. Uh huh. Shrimp. Was that the one Tim did? Yeah, Tim did. When yeah. Tim puts a recipe up on Panhandle Surf Fishing, I'm like, oh, you jerk! I got to make that now. Mm-hmm. Anything Alfredo? Yeah, good times right there. Really good one there. So Tim Brooms got this posted up in Panhandle Surf Fishing. And you're welcome to take a look at it here. It's also on the Half Hitch Destin page. Go back and look. He posts all this stuff so you can go ahead and recreate those beautiful, wonderful things. I think I'm going to make that tomorrow night. That looks good. Yeah. We got enough shrimp. A, I'm going to make a note to self. Here was Daniel's. There it was. I knew I had it. So it, was under, it wasn't at the max. It didn't, wouldn't have beat, but it's still a 12.24 pound sheep at 26 inches. That's a big damn sheep's head. That yeah. is a monster. Uh, I have 17. Yeah, because that was the last time we went online. Mm-hmm. Okay, Matt Lanier is, if you guys aren't following him, he's also part of the Salt Strong crew. Matt's a hell of an angler. Lots of good stuff. He's doing a lot of tournaments, but he's got a lot of stuff he shares on knowledge. So if you want to get into kayaks and other fishing one, definitely follow Matt. Um, very much so enjoy my conversations with him. I've only had a couple uh, in passing. Never really. We haven't had a full knee, kneecap to kneecap, but Matt does really good stuff with his social and worth following. Um, that's pretty much the big stuff. I really get because this was all way back. Mm. Ugh, those damn things. I saw this and I thought, meh, maybe. This is worms. That's a serious coquina. But yeah, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, put them in the bait bag, throw it out there. Yeah. Cheese cloth does great things. Tuna, 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 tuna. I think that was all I. Food. No, that was all I had. So there you go. There's my scroll. Yes. It's a good scroll. Thank you. I liked your scroll. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right. Well, uh, coming up on just over an hour. We did pretty good. I mean, we, we, we kind of uh, drug along at, at the beginning, but then we got the groove going, and then we were right back and put us yeah. right back on time. So Littering and. Littering I know. Littering and. and. Mm-hmm. Such a good movie. Myrtle Beach Surf Fishing. What is happening? Uh, so can we discuss the candy at, now? Coming at the no. end. Oh, oh, Snook Candy's the stupidest friggin' reply to a damn comment ever. It's, it bothered yeah. me, okay? That's just what it, it is. Me. Somebody puts on there, whoa, what's their, what's your friggin', what, what kind of fish idea is this? Snook candy. And all I see is Bugs Bunny. Uh, mm-hmm. Licking it now, <laughs> but it's like, it's like, just tell them what the goddamn fish is. Just tell yeah. them what the damn fish is. Yeah. We don't have snook here, okay? Stop calling it snook candy. So, well, actually, we might. Okay. So, yeah, there's there's a few. But 
So when, when people make a post like that to say, hey, what kind of fish is this? Sometimes I think to myself, wouldn't it be quicker to use Google Lens or what? or the Fish Rules app or, or something like that that'll tell you because the time you took to make a post about it, you could have figured out what the fish was. That just that's just me. And what? and theoretically, if you don't know what the fish is, you should catch it and release it anyway. Don't send a picture from a cooler and go, hey, what kind of fish is this? Because if you don't know, it shouldn't be laying on ice in a cooler because you may not be able to keep it. And then you end up with a big old fine, lose your truck, car, whatever. Or when they're you know on I mean? your granite I just, or, or when they're on your granite countertop. I've seen yeah. that one a couple times. But you know, I, I I make that statement, but all for helping someone. If you're gonna make a post, then then I agree with you. Just tell them what the damn fish is and be done with it. You know what I mean? There's no sense trying to be a smart ass about it. No. That's just my thoughts. It's okay. But I do think I you can figure it. Yeah, it's okay to say I don't know. But anyway. Or scroll just just yeah. scroll by yeah or one fish and permit why don't we not have snook well they don't come this far they do on the inside but not out to the piers you can catch them inshore the rivers um, in the river system but you will not catch them out by the water you won't catch them in the surf out here well not say, like you uh not like you can go down in the mangroves and, and mm -hmm. catch them down in South Florida like that. Yeah. Or from the beach in South Florida. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. Good stuff. Good times. I am so, dude, yeah. it was good to get back. It kind of it was. was a little weird yeah. to be sitting in the, well, as I'm digitized now, a little weird to be sitting in the big kid chair. It's kind of, kind of different. I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. Sitting out there. It's yeah. a little weird. It's a little yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> But it's comfy, so it really is. <laughs> My ass is not sad. No. Uh, uh, thanks for completing the weekend. You're welcome, real coastal. Thank we'll you for to, all the uh, stuff you all been yeah. doing. Your videos have been great. Good job posting two a week. You keep doing that, Julie. Keep posting two a week. You're doing so good. <laughs> Riddle, uh, love that. Love that. Thanks. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, as always, we appreciate you sticking around, watching this week. We'll be back next Sunday night. Yeah, we should be. We should. I got nothing. Yeah, yeah we'll be here. Should be. <laughs> so until then, y'all take care. Get out there and do some fishing. Later. <laughs>